Today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install a radiator on a go-kart. This one here is off an X3125, so let's get into the video. Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install the X30 radiator on this Tony Kart 401. Now this uh, radiator could be used on other engines, but it's specific for the X3125 engine that's super popular here in Southeast Queensland and all around Australia. We do have an upgraded new line radiator bracket support that's gonna be going on. That's a great feature and I'll show you why we upgrade the radiator bracket to avoid a DNF or a DQ from a radiator going astray. So all the parts come shipped from iArmy. That includes the radiator, the radiator bracket, the standard radiator support, which we're gonna get rid of because it is uh, a pressed steel. And with the vibration of racing, uh, they do have a tendency to crack here. So what we're going to install today is the upgraded new line bracket kit. Uh, you'll see that this is billet alloy. It's a little bit stronger, more heavy duty, and very resistant to breaking. The first thing we're gonna do is install the bracket onto the back of the radiator through the rubber grommets before we install the radiator on the go-kart. So now that we've got the radiator removed, we can install a little bit of uh, rubber grease onto these little grommets because they're gonna go down in these holes and they are incredibly tight. But with a little bit of lube, magic happens. Now that we've got the rubber grommets installed, we can install the bracket using a bit of lube on the end of the pins. What we're using here today is just a little bit of rubber grease. Just remember when you're installing the bracket, this little boss here goes to the bottom. We can just slide the pins through the rubber grommets. Go across to one side and then we can push it back through the other side. Sometimes those pins can be a little bit tight, but if you use a bit of rubber grease, it can help with that installation process. So there's two bolts. The long one goes to the bottom and the short one goes to the top. Insert the first flat washer onto the bolt and insert it through this side of the bracket, add the washer to the other side and the M6 nylock nut. And then we can do those two up using two 10 millimeter ring spanners. And it's the same for the other side. So now that we've got our bracket installed on our radiator, the next thing to do is a mock-up of where the radiator is gonna sit on the chassis because this little bracket for the bottom is offset. So you can move the radiator more outboard or inboard depending if you've got a bigger seat or a smaller side pod. So you can do a little bit of customization. So now that we're gonna do a bit of a mock-up with the radiator, we're just trying to get the orientation inboard, outboard and front to rear. I like to run my radiators as low to the chassis rails as I can and have as much Larry layback as I can to try to keep the radiator top cap away from the driver's elbow. Now you've got the radiator roughly in place. You can see that this bracket's sitting pretty nicely and we don't need to move it outboards or inboards too much. We can just bolt it straight up to the radiator and then put the radiator onto the frame. What I like to do is use a couple of big penny washers here, either side of this uh, bracket on the chassis, just to give the bracket a little bit more rigidity. So 
So all the brackets are only loosely done up so that you can get your final settings done on the radiator before it all gets locked into position. The last thing I'm going to do is put the bolt through the new line bracket to the bearing cassette and that will really lock the back of the radiator in and then I can go back through and lock all the nuts and bolts off nice and tight. A little bit of Loctite on these goes a long way to securing this bolt into the cassette because we don't want that coming loose when we're out on the track. So the new line bracket is fully adjustable. Here we can just loosen that off and then you can change the height of your radiator as well. But like I said, I try to run the radiators as low as I can to get them away from the driver. So then I do that guy back up and then run this guy all the way down to this hole at the back of the cassette. And that way you get your radiator down as low as you can. And now I'll go back through all the nuts and bolts and make sure they're super duper tight. Once the radiator is installed, we're ready for the next process and that'll be in our next video. Like and subscribe for more awesome content from your friends here at the House of Power. See you in the next video.